Hello and thank you for joining me. I'm Heather Forgan of StampWithNelly.com. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in the UK. Today I want to show you this magical meadow bundle and the um, designer series paper called Winter Meadow. This Winter Meadow suite will be in the mini catalogue that launches on the 6th of September 2023. So I'm just giving you a quick flick at the designer series paper. This one is gorgeous. It has the same design on that side and that side. And then we have this one, which I have used for my prototype of today's card. That's what it has on the back. This one is absolutely stunning. But I love the other side too. Hey, what then happens? <laughs> in fact, I love all of the designs in this. That, um, it's going to be a problem. Um, gorgeous watercolour trees and um, kind of marbly effect on that. I will be using this sheet of paper for today's card. And this is it. So we have a bit, little bit of a fancy fold. It is an offset gate fold. Um, untie the ribbon. Like so. And I've stamped inside as well. Such a pretty font on the stamps. And you may notice that I've got some stamped um, die cuts on there as well. Winter Wishes just punched with the double oval punch. So I'm not going to bother trying that just now. Um, there are 13 dies, some of which coordinate with these stamps um, and other ones that are standalone. So I'm using some of the standalone uh, dies in an upcoming video. Um, so today I'm using the stamps and the dies that coordinate with them. Okay, I've already got them out the back. And the stamps, let me just bring one of them in here. If I were to ink that up, it would all be the same colour. But obviously what I wanted was for the berries to coordinate with the paper and the leaves to be a different colour. Okay, so that one's fine. It's, it's all just one stamp. But these two, um, to get that effect, I had to use stamp and write markers. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple of other ideas. So we'll do the stamping bit first, then we'll die cut, and then we can just assemble that offset gatefold card. Okay, so for this one, I don't actually have a Moody Mauve um, stamp and write marker. I did instead add some of the ink to a small clear block and picked it up with a blender pen and just used that as if it was a stamp and write marker. Okay. I am going to use shaded spruce and uh, blueberry bushel for this one and get me glasses on i've just made that wet obviously um and it is simply a case of just coloring in the bits that you want blue So just my berries. And just take it easy at the edges. So that you don't get the wrong colour ink on the leaves. Okay. 
so that's my berries done and then bring in the shaded spruce to color in the bits that I actually want to be green so leaves and a little bits at the top of the berries and the stems There's a little bit there that I'm trying not forget. So. Okay, now, once you're satisfied that you've got all of the ink where you want it to be, lid back on so it doesn't dry out. Give it a little bit of a huff. <sighs> so you can see that the um, there's a bit of condensation on the block there. And then stamp it down. Just giving it a little bit of a huff just puts a little bit more moisture back in in case it is dried out that little bit and there you go easy peasy when you've got the right equipment on the larger stamp i'm going to show you an alternative um, again if you do not have the stamp and write markers but you've got the ink pads i'm going to ink that all up with shaded spruce. But I obviously do not want shaded spruce. Um, I'm going to take that off the edge so that I don't muck it up. I obviously don't want shaded spruce berries. I want blueberries. Okay, so I can either take my um, baby wipe here, well used, slightly damp, okay, and take that off. Just be careful not to take off the bits that you actually want to stay green, or if it's really detailed you can come in with a cotton bud take the worst of it off with one end and then with the other end Take a bit more off. But because I'm putting a blue on, it's not a light colour. If I was doing something like yellow, I would want to get as much of that ink off as possible. And I possibly wouldn't do it this way around. Um, markers would probably be much better for that. But because um, I've got... A darker colour going on doesn't have to get all off the um, blue off. So I've got this marker so I am just going to do some of them but I'll show you what I mean if you don't have the marker and you've just got the ink pad and you've got a blender pen which we normally use for our watercolour pencils. Right, so tiny little bit of ink on that, don't need much. And then I've got my blender pen here. Okay, and I'm just 
picking up some of that ink there, okay, to transfer it exactly as you would do with your stamp and write marker. So you can still get the same effect this way round. Right. Let me give this another huff. <sighs> Running out of breath. There we go. I'm going to stamp that there. Okay. Now, my blender pen's got quite a lot of ink on it, so just scribble it until it comes clean. It will still have a stain. That is nearly there. Yeah, we're good, I think. Um, so yeah, it still has a bit of a stain, but no longer actually colours that ink. Clean up your block. Okay, giving that a good press. I've left it there so that it's got plenty of time for the ink to transfer. And that's good. So it's not as detailed, it's not as bright um, doing it with the um, blender pen on that bit there as it is doing it with the stamp and write marker, but it's not bad. It's better than having green berries, I think. So last one I want to stamp is the one that doesn't need any intervention. It's just one colour. Stamp that on there. Lovely. So easy. <laughs> All right. They are ready to be die cut. I have the three coordinating dies here. Okay, so I will line that up, pop a bit of washi tape on, or two, and the larger ones. So with these ones, I kind of make sure I've got the bottom bit in and the top bit in and the rest will take care of itself. And then that one, like so. Put that like so. Right, okay. I will die cut this, be back with you in just a moment. We are all die cut here and the other bit of stamping I want to do is my winter wishes. So I've got winter wishes and then in the inside I have this. May the season of sparkle bring joy and delight. So I'm going to do exactly the same. And I think I will do blueberry bushel for the front for the winter wishes. Wishes popped on there. Use my double oval punch using the bigger one. Line that up. Pop that out so that's that bit ready. And I've already done the cutting of my pieces. So this is the piece that's going to go inside. I will give you the measurements in a moment. And I want to... Uh, I wasn't going to do that. I was going to do all the green, but I've inked it now and I'm not wasting my ink. <laughs> so there we are. Try and get that straight. OK. 
kind of difficult for me to see. Ah, if it's squint, it's not too bad. That's okay. Good. Right. So the other bit I did was just to add some leaves in here. Last bit of stamping. Then we can make okay, a little bit there. A bit there, and a bit there too. How pretty! Just that little bit extra detail in sight. Okay, I have a piece of blueberry bushel card that measures eight and a quarter so that is the full width of an A4 sheet by five and three quarters so that's just under half of the length of an A4 sheet okay and um, if you're using US letter card I would simply trim your eight and a half down to eight and a quarter and then you can use the same score lines etc and instead of five and three quarters trim it down to your usual five and a half so that it fits in your normal envelope and um, so you'll need to adjust your layers as well so my inside layer is five and five eighths by four inches um, so US, you would change that to five and three eighths by four inches. I've got a piece for the front that is five and five eighths by one, no, two and a half. And this one's five and five eighths by one and three eighths. So US, you would change the height of that one down to um, five and three eighths. Okay, your DSP, you're going to change that down to five and a quarter. But for A4 card, this will be um, five and a half by two and three eighths and five and a half by one and a quarter. All of these measurements will be in my blog post, so you will um, be able to get them from there. Don't worry about having to write it all down. Okay, so those are my layers, but I need to put my score lines on here. Just gonna bring in my trimmer. So on the long side, so this is the eight and a quarter side, I want to score this, get that cut and blade out of the way, score this at two and five eighths, so that's two and a half and then an extra eighth, two and five eighths from one side, okay, and turn it around and score it at one and a half on the other side there. scoring done okay so this bit folder it's going to be a front like that okay so we have that teeny teeny tiny little gap in between right so um, first of all I'm just going to add this layer inside And then we can decorate the front. So nice and quick and easy to put together once you've done all your prep work. I can add my white pieces straight on. Just smudge that around until you have nice even layer 
even margin round about your layer. Okay. I'm happy with that. And then this one. Here. Again, just benefit of liquid glue, you can move it around until you're absolutely happy, then commit. Okay, so before we go ahead and um, add the designer series paper and our stamped pieces that we did I want to add some tape, tear and tape, scissors. Where I'm going to add my ribbon. Okay, so just leaving a little bit of a gap from your edge there. Use that. No, nope, doesn't want to work. There we go. And the card that I made originally, I used a new ribbon that is called, what's it called? Iridescent ribbon. And this one, I am using sheer ribbon. It up in because the ribbons are so pretty I want to use them all. Okay so adding that ribbon there and give yourself plenty to tie your bow. You can always buy more <laughs> and I'm really just wanting to make sure that I've got my ribbons. Let's just chop it first. Okay ribbons in line. There we go. All right, so that's that ready to tie. I just need to put my designer series paper pieces over the top. Now, I did chop these so that there was a continuous pattern. And again, just, oops. Move it around until you're happy. Give it a press. Okay. Especially over that ribbon piece there. Okay. Likewise. piece of DSP. Happy with that. There we go. Now, the bits we made earlier, I put on with some dimensionals and some not. So, the let me see what I did. Let me see what I did. <laughs> right, so the largest one I just simply added straight on with glue. Okay, now bear in mind that I'm going to have my bow down there. Kind of want to place these a little bit further up. Okay. This one, I added some mini dimensionals just to the top. Take the backing off. And put a little bit of glue down the bottom piece there. Okay. And add it. Uh, on so 
close to the edge but not overlapping and then this one I put larger dimensional you could just stick with the smaller ones actually probably easier so that's just a very neat fit let's just oops stick with the smaller ones have I got any yeah one Oh, some at the other side. Okay. And again, a little bit of glue down the bottom. And it just gives it a little bit more dimension. Okay, popping that one on there. Okay, so we're kind of flat there. But we've got a bit of height on those bits there and then i can put that on there with dimensionals go big this time okay so just be careful where you're putting them i'm going to put them on there for that one and i'll put one on the end of my oval like so and then I don't want to glue that end down because obviously of the way it opens last piece is to tie my ribbon Bring it together and this one's a little bit easier because it is a softer ribbon than the iridescent one that I used first of all which is a little bit more stiff um, but they're both gorgeous absolutely gorgeous there we are that will do I can faff about with that later to my heart's content but for now that will do Trim off the tails. Like so, and then a bit of bling. So with the original one, I added some of the in color dots. And I don't know what I'm gonna add on this one because I don't think I've got any shaded spruce or blueberry bushel so i think we might need to go with just some bling to go with the ribbon so these are the adhesive backed sparkle gems and sparkle goes with everything doesn't it so we'll go And there I have one on the other side and a little one just in there lovely so there we go we have two offset gatefold cards I'm not going to tie the ribbon but just so you can see it a bit better um, using our wonderful new suite called Winter Meadow available from the 6th of September 2023. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment and if you're new to my channel, please do click on the subscribe button, click the bell and you'll get a notification the next time I upload a tutorial. Until then, please do take care. Bye bye.